kinematics on one dimensional motion. The meaning of kinematics means it is a purely descriptive study of motion. So if we consider a particle that is moving from this point to a different point in a straight line in one dimension, then we can always describe the particle. So the question is how we describe the particle. There are many ways to describe. First is we can describe that in time in terms of time, wherein at the starting point we can call this as t naught for the initial time, and as it moves, then we have a final time. We have the initial and we have the final time. So therefore, we can always obtain the time interval. The time interval is the difference from final minus initial. And take note that the time t is always measured from the point of reference. So therefore, we cannot provide initial time and final time without the reference point. In the reference point, our time is said to be 0. And our position is also zero. So if we can describe the particle in terms of time, we can also pro describe the particle in terms of position, representing x, because this is along x axis, or one dimension. So at the initial point, we have the initial time, we have also the initial position. In the final point, we have the final time, and we have also the final position. So therefore, we can say that the particle is at the initial position, x naught, and it moves towards the final position, x. So the part, the part, therefore, the particle is said to be in motion. Because the definition of motion means it has a change in position. If the particle changes its, posi its position, then the particle is said to be in motion. So therefore, if we subtract the final position with the initial position, we call that as displacement of travel. So the displacement is a change in position. The word change means final minus initial. So we are describing the particle in terms of position. Another way is to describe it in terms of velocity. So in this case, at the initial point, we have the initial velocity of particle. And in the final point, we have the final velocity. Initial is B naught, while the final is B without subscript. So therefore, we are describing the particle in terms of velocity. Now, if, now velocity means the change in position, meaning if we divide this displacement or change in position by the time interval, the result is the average velocity. Average velocity means it is the velocity from 1 to 2. But if we consider if we consider uh, the infinitesimal change, then therefore your velocity is instantaneous velocity. Another way is to describe is to use the physical quantity acceleration. The acceleration is the change in velocity per time interval. So if we divide the change in velocity means final velocity minus initial, divide it by the time interval, the result is average acceleration. So if we have average velocity, which is the change in position by time interval, then we have the average acceleration as the change in velocity means final b minus initial b divided by the time interval. The answer is the average acceleration. Talking about infinitesimal, in the velocity, if we consider the infinitesimal change of, of the displacement with time, then the result is instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity is the velocity at a certain instant. So therefore, we can always find the exact velocity of travel, traveling t naught to t. So it is the velocity at that point. While the average velocity is just 
taking the average of the entire velocity traveling from T0 to T, then we have a single value. But for instantaneous velocity, there is a velocity for every time. Then, if we consider the infinitesimal velocity with a time interval, infinitesimal time, then the result is the instantaneous acceleration also. Meaning, we consider a very, very small change. So, therefore, at that point, we are calculating the amount of the exact acceleration at that point. We call that as instantaneous acceleration. So, therefore, these are the quantities that describes the motion of particle. The time, position, velocity, and acceleration. Another, another way is to, to describe is to use a graph. Meaning, we can describe the, position, the motion looking at the graph. What are the graphs? We have the XT graph. XT graph means it is the position per with, with, uh, for every time. So the position being the independent variable or dependent variable while T is the dependent variable. So we have the, we can create the graph. Vertical is for X. The horizontal is for T. So for every value of T there is a corresponding there is a corresponding value of the position. So we call that as XT graph. So meaning if if the graph is horizontal, we can describe the particle to be at rest because there is no position. There is a time, but there is no position. So therefore, the particle is the at rest. It doesn't move at that point. When the graph is inclined positive, then it follows that the particle is moving towards the positive value. If the graph is open to the right, then the particle is moves in opposite direction, meaning reverse direction. Another graph is the BT graph. BT means velocity time. So we can also provide a graph. The uh, dependent variable is B and the independent variable is T. So, collecting all velocities for every time, then we can create a graph. By the way, if in, in XT graph, the slope of the graph in position time or XT graph is the velocity. Meaning, in the XT graph, if the velocity is, if the slope is positive, means the velocity is positive at that point, then the meaning is the particle is moving with velocity towards the positive x-axis. If, if the slope is open to the right in the xt graph, then the velocity is negative. Means there is a velocity but in opposite direction, in a negative direction. So, what is the graph? What is the slope of the... What is the meaning of bt graph? If, if the line... If... If the line opens to the right, then the velocity is towards the positive x. If the line slope in the bt or the line in the bt is open to the left, then it is moving towards the left side. If the slope or if the line of the bt graph is horizontal, then we can describe it that there is no change in velocity. So the velocity is maintained. While open to the right means the velocity is increasing. Open to the left, the velocity is decreasing. Okay? So another way is to describe in terms of AT graph. By the way, the slope of the VT is acceleration. That's why if the line is inclined positive, you are accelerating. If the, if the line is open to the left, then the velocity is 
decreasing. So therefore, acceleration is negative, meaning it is deceleration. If the slope is horizontal or the line is horizontal, then the acceleration is zero. So therefore, there is no change in velocity. Now, in an AT graph, in uniformly accelerated body, the slope is always horizontal for uniform acceleration. For non uniform, then open to the right means increasing acceleration, open to the left means decreasing acceleration. So, therefore, graphically, we can also describe the particle uh, in motion in terms of graph. Okay. Consider the differential equation A. Take note, A is the change in velocity per time. If we take the color product in order to separate the variable, separating the velocity with time, so therefore, this differential equation is separable. So we can do the process of finding the solution because this is a differential equation. So in, in, in mathematics, in, in calculus, in order to solve for the uh, solution of B, we will integrate both sides. So, integrating both sides, now we can, in this, for simplicity, we will consider the acceleration to be constant. So, if this is constant, if A is constant, meaning it does not change its magnitude, then the particle is under the uniformly accelerated body. Meaning, when if we hear the word uniformly accelerated body, the acceleration is constant. It does not change its acceleration. But the velocity is kept on changing. In what way that the velocity does not change? If the acceleration is zero. So therefore, if the acceleration is zero, then the body moves with uniform motion. But for a uniformly accelerated body, there is an acceleration, so therefore, the particle changes its velocity. It can be change increasing or change decreasing. Increasing means positive acceleration. Decreasing means negative acceleration. So, uh, integrating both sides, the integral of the differential B is B, while A is constant, so we can take it out from the integral sign. So, the integral of dt is t. And the limits, the limit of, of B ranging from B naught to B, while T is T naught to T. So, apply the integral. So, B ranging B naught to B, A times T, T ranging T naught to T. So, evaluate the limits. Evaluating the limits, this will become B minus B naught is equal to A quantity T minus T naught. If we see t be equal to 0, for simplicity means in the starting point, the time is 0, then we can do it. So, t naught becomes 0. So, what we have now is we have only the b minus b naught plus a t. Transposing this b naught to the right side, we come up with a functional relationship of b with respect to t. Meaning, b is a function of time. Remember, b is b naught is constant and A is constant but T varies with time. So, T will keep on changing. So, therefore, velocity is also keep on changing and this is linearly. So, you can expect that the graph of this is a straight line. So, therefore, this is, take note, this is only for a uniformly accelerated body. Means the A is constant. That's why we, we move A outside the integral because A is Constant. So, if A is constant, the, the, the motion is said to be a uniformly accelerated body. And this is called as the velocity as a function of time. So, if we continue this velocity as a function of time, take note that velocity as a function of time is dx over dt, the infinitesimal change. So, replacing velocity with dx dt, and this will be equal to V naught plus A T. So, again, we have another differential equation. So, we will do the solution of X because we want the value of X. So, therefore, we must uh, separate the variable. 
because this is a separable, and after that, we will integrate both sides. So, therefore, the limit of x should be ranging from initial position towards the final position, while the time ranging from the t naught to t. So, this b naught is constant. So, therefore, uh, but this is enclosed with the grouping symbol, so we can apply the sum rule, the basic rule of integration. So, the integral of the x is x, so the limit is x naught to x, while in some rule, the, the, the derivative of v naught is 0, and the derivative of 80 is 1 half 80 squared, and the limit is t naught to t. So, evaluating the limits. Now, if we if we set the x not be equal to 0 and t not be equal to 0, then evaluate the limits, then the resulting value becomes this one. So this is 0 and evaluate the t here, then this is 0. So therefore, this the whole term becomes negative. So therefore, since this is 0, then our final equation becomes x as a function of time, which is equal to v naught t plus 1 half 80 squared. Okay? So, uh, take note again, this is 0, and this is also 0. Evaluate the limit upper minus lower, and this is 0. So, this whole term becomes 0, that's why this is 0. So, this is already 0, so we come up with a position as a function of time. So we have the velocity as a function of time and this is the position as a function of time. So it's the graph of this. So the graph is uh, take note this is v naught is constant and a is constant so the only variable is t and the t is second degree variable and this is a second degree variable with positive a. So therefore the curve must be the curve must be open upward. So if we assume that the graph is okay, this is open upward. So therefore this most likely this will be the result. If this is negative, so therefore meaning if the acceleration is negative, the curve is downward. So meaning in the XT graph if the if we have a curve open upward then it is said the the, the particle is accelerating. But if it is open downward the velocity is decelerating. The acceleration is negative, means it is decelerating. If this is horizontal, if this is a straight line, then what does it mean? Acceleration is zero. So the velocity is constant. Now in a VT graph, in a VT graph, this is a linear equation. So it is a straight line because this is a first degree. So this is positive. If, if the line is open to the left, then this will become negative acceleration. If this is horizontal, means the acceleration is zero. The initial velocity is equal to the final velocity. So this is the meaning of Okay, well the graph of the acceleration, the 80 graph, means it is always horizontal. If the acceleration is negative, then it's below the line. Below the line. If the positive means up above, above the line of the xt graph. So this is the slope vt graph. The slope of vt graph is acceleration, while the slope of xt graph is the velocity. So in order to understand clearly, we uh, the principle of the one-dimensional motion in kinematics, let us have this example. A car starts from rest at a constant rate of 1.5 meter per second squared for second or 3 seconds find the velocity and displacement of the car at the end of the time so in this problem we will start doing the uh, use the acceleration formula acceleration is a db over dt so take note the acceleration is given as 1.5 is the acceleration and because this is start from rest so therefore the velocity must Initial must be zero. 
and this is the time interval. So, T0 is 0, then the time in the final is 3 seconds. So, the question is, what is the average, what is the velocity? Means, this must be an instantaneous velocity. And the displacement of the car at the end of the of that time. So, meaning, after traveling 3 seconds, with an acceleration of 1.5, how much is the velocity and how much is the displacement of the car? So therefore, we'll start at this equation and we will replace the A, B equal to 1.5, take diagonal product. So this is a differential equation. It's already separated. So take the integrating both sides, integral. So the velocity, take note the limit. The velocity starts from rest so therefore this must be zero and it moves at any point let us say b then the time starts from t then it up from zero and, and it ends up with t but we know t is three seconds so we can replace it t or later on along so therefore uh okay do the integration the integral of db is b so the limit is zero to b and the integral of dt is t, 0 to t, equal with the limit, it should be upper minus lower, so it should be b minus 0. Then 1.5 upper, this is t minus 0. So therefore, we come up with this result. So with meaning, the velocity at any time is 1.5t. Since the time is 3 seconds, we can replace that with 3 seconds, then evaluate, meaning the velocity after traveling 3 seconds is 1.5 times 3. And the answer is, the velocity final is 4.5 meter per second. Okay, so continue, we have to solve the displacement. So, what will you do? So, using the velocity as a function of time, this one, the velocity as a function of time, replace the velocity with dx over dt, or the infinitesimal change of x with t, then dx over dt is equal to 1.5. So, therefore, v is dx over dt. Then, again, separate the variable, take the integral, both sides, and the limit is of x is from 0 to x means the x is the final position the initial is 0 and t is still 0 initial and final t so then integrate, integrate both sides this will becomes x because this is from 0 to x x and this is 1.5 the integral of t is t squared over 2 so t squared over 2 and 1.5 is constant so we move it out from the integral so then, therefore, our x as a function of time is 0.75 t squared. So at the time 3 seconds, replace the time here, then the position in 3 seconds of travel is 6.75 meter. So therefore, this is the displacement after 3 seconds of travel. While the 4.5 is the velocity after 3 seconds of travel. These are the answers to the problem. Okay, for, for your practice, solve this one. You are asked to find how far an automobile moves while its speed increasing uniformly from 15 miles per hour to 45 miles per hour in seconds so you can use the algebra base to solve this one start from acceleration again and the acceleration can be computed here solve the acceleration and we have the initial this is the initial velocity and this is the final velocity so be consistent with your unit because it is seconds and this is per hour so you can convert this to hour or you can convert this to miles per second so Okay. For the problem to the car travels with a constant speed, so it's moving initially at 420 meters per second, suddenly stop. 
means the final is zero. Final velocity is zero. To a distance of 15 meters, so from from 20 meters per second, he applies a brake that causes the particle, the car, to stop at that point. So the final velocity is zero. With that displacement of 15 meters, what will be the time traveled by the car during that displacement? Letter B, calculate the acceleration of this travel. Okay? Have a nice day. Thank you.